In my 18 years in the care system, I met thousands of young people who were under great stress and pressure. Considering they were away from their families and traumatised, the way that they dealt with their daily lives is on a par with superheroes. When I was about 16 years old, I ran away barefoot down the East Lanx Road to the city, to Manchester. It was the engine of my future <laughs> and I needed to get close to it. It's funny, you take for granted being, um, you know, knowing yourself, you know, who your parents are and, and what have you, but I didn't have parents, I didn't have family. So, you know, how would I know about cocoa butter that you put on your skin to stop yourself going grey? How would I know how to look after my hair? It was the strangest thing. I did not know about who I was. My poems are tattooed throughout this city. There's one on Tibb Street, which is a, a mile long poem that's uh, where my verses are laid into the ground and the signatures at the bottom. There's the first one on Hardy's Well, one inside the university, Let There Be Peace, and um, there's Rain, the poem Rain, um, which uh, reads, when the rain falls, they talk of Manchester. But when the triumphant rain falls, we see rainbows. Sounds quite simple, but the way it's written is where the letters go beneath each other, like rainfall. My name's Keila, from Halifax. I'm studying in Huddersfield at the moment. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, that wow. is amazing. You look amazing. You look amazing. Like your hair on it. <laughs> Do you like it? Whoa. Oh my gosh. That is I like so how you cool. look. I went into care when I was 10 years old. My mum was a drug user, so obviously she, when she was under the influences, she didn't care what was going on around her. She, she was very careless in general. Me and my brother did pretty much whatever we wanted. I didn't remember seeing her all that much. I mean, she was there, she was just in her bedroom a lot. What do people think of the foster child? I think they associate them with criminals. There's no clear signs that would say, Oh, she looks like she's in foster care. And I wasn't like, I didn't misbehave at school or anything. And I think that's what they expected when not everyone's like that. The reason that I can see that they are superheroes like the X-Men, like Superman, like Spider-Man, like Cinderella, they were flawed, you know, they were flawed. Harry Potter ran away from home just like many of the young people in the children's homes ran away from home. You know, it's a natural thing to do if you feel unsafe, if you feel there are dementors nearby, like Harry Potter did. This isn't some great projection. That's the fact, it's in the writing. I can't think of a superhero who wasn't adopted right now or fostered, which I think is quite, I think it's quite cool actually. A good example is Spider-Man because he had to live with his family because he couldn't live with his parents and they all have this amazing like adventure and it is because they are in foster care. Have you got anything that you've had all of your life? I had a massive collection of teddies oh, and I loved them but I don't think so. The only thing I've ever kept the same 
is my ponytail. Ever since I was young, I've had a ponytail in my hair. Well, I, I couldn't take my toys when I went into the children's homes, and I've never forgot it. It was just toys in the boxes of my foster parents, and I, they wouldn't not let me take my own toys. It does make me angry that we don't make the connection, right? We become blind to the connection. We look at the foster child as if they're a criminal, as if they're a bad person, as if something will go wrong with them because they're not settled, because they're a threat to our own structure. And then we'll go home and read to our children books by, about, about Harry Potter and, and not make the connection.